Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is part two. Like I was saying, the Bible is not an ordinary book. There is no other book like the Bible. God proves his existence through prophecy. Okay? God proves his existence through prophecy. So there's no such thing as a well-known research atheist. Because anybody who says they have read the Bible and they don't believe in it, people that say, oh, I, don't, I don't believe in the Bible. Well, these people have not studied the Bible diligently for the evidence that it represents in their favor. Okay? Now listen to this. This was back like 4,000 years ago probably. Yeah, more than that. More than that. Okay, this is Isaiah chapter 27. I'll start from verse... I'll start from verse 6. six. Isaiah 27 verse 6. Those who come... Okay, those who come... He shall cause to take root in Jacob. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the world with fruit. Isn't that significant, ladies and gentlemen? Imagine reading this back in 1900s when the Jews are being persecuted by Hitler. They're being exterminated. They're being killed. You would have thought this was impossible. Impossible to happen. And yet, look at today. Israel's prospering. They, they, have, they have their own gardens. They, they, they ship out fruit to other countries of the world. Exactly as the Bible stated. And did you know that the Bible talks about television? That's right. It talks about television. I want to read it to you. Watch this. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation 11, verse, okay, yeah, right here. Then those from the, because the two witnesses are going to be killed. There's going to be two prophets in the, in the city of Jerusalem prophesying. This is after the rapture of the church. There will be two prophets prophesying in Jerusalem. They will have power. They will be able to destroy their enemies by calling fire down from heaven, or they'll be able to blow fire out of their mouth. They'll be able to shut up the sky. They'll be able to make it not rain. They'll be, they'll be able to strike the world with any plague they want. They'll be, they'll be able to do all kinds of things. But after they're done prophesying, after they're done their ministry, they're going to be killed. Their bodies are going to lay in the streets of Jerusalem for three and a half days. But after three and a half days, but look at, just hold on. Verse 9. Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. Isn't that significant? How is that possible? Because listen to it. Those from the peoples, there's an S at the end. Peoples. More than one. Peoples. Tribes. Tongues. And nations. Will see their dead bodies. This was totally impossible back then. But now we have the internet. We have the, the television. Right away when something happens. Boom. It's breaking news. This was all in the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen. This is literally amazing. Just to stop and think. You see... For people to see the fulfilled prophecies, they, they say, well, I don't believe it. And yet, it's right. the proof is right there. The reason they don't want to believe it, because the Bible predicted it, and it's happening right before them. They're living in denial. The reason they don't want to believe it is because they don't want to believe that the Bible is true. But it's not going to change reality. The Bible is true, whether you believe in it or not. This Bible is not true because I believe in it. It's true because it's true. Truth does not need you to believe in it for it to exist. It exists whether you believe in it or not. And that's the truth. That's the absolute truth. Like, what else could I say? Like, 
Yeah, Revelation chapter 13 from 16 to 18. Listen to this. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. You see? A globe, that's globally. There's going to be a world dictator on the scene. He's going, to, he's going to control all the comers by the one world financial system. They're going to totally eliminate cash. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this verse clearly says he causes all. That's the whole world. No one is able to buy or sell without a mark. Not the euro, not the U.S. dollar, not the Canadian dollar. That's going to be obsolete, absolutely gone. They're going into a cashless economy, total cashless society, where everybody will be under this one world government, this dictator's control. Total control, your whole life will be open before this one world government on their database. And this is all going to happen during the tribulation period. And ladies and gentlemen, so much, so much of the prophecies have already come to pass. So the remaining stuff will also come to pass. Jesus Christ revealed 109 prophecies when he came to earth the first time. When he came to die, he fulfilled 109 of them. To exact detail, proving and showing that he is the Messiah, he is the Son of the living God, and he is the Christ. And that's amazing. So he's going to fulfill the remaining stuff that hasn't happened yet. This is God's plan. God has a prophetic plan for this world. So this is what's going to happen with the, when the Antichrist rules during the tribulation. This whole world is going to be under a one world government, a one world dictator. And there will be a one world religion. There will be a one world church. You name it. One world economy. And... Uh, That's all I wanted to say was that it's just that should just show you guys that the Bible is indeed the word of the living God. As God proved himself, he said declaring the end from the beginning and he showed his prophets this. He showed them because think about this. Let me take you to the book of Ezekiel. Look at this. This here would make no no sense no no sense whatsoever. And plus there's gonna be a temple in Jerusalem that's where the Antichrist is going to go and say, I am God, declaring to the whole world that he is God. He will exalt himself above everything that is called God or that is worshipped. That he sits as God in the temple of God, proclaiming to the whole world that he is God. And isn't that significant that that prophecy is in the middle of its fulfillment? But not with the Antichrist, not yet. I'm talking about the temple. The Jews are talking about rebuilding the third temple. And before... None of them had any interest in building the temple, but now, them, now all of them are saying we need to rebuild our Jewish temple. Exactly as the Bible said. Like that's the temple that the Antichrist is going to sit in and proclaim to the whole world that he is God. But I wanted to show you this in Ezekiel chapter 38. And that's happening in the Temple Institute. They've got all the equipment. They have the red heifer. Everything's on the ball according to God's word. Everything's on schedule, ladies and gentlemen. So Ezekiel chapter 38, listen to this. Prepare yourself and be ready, you all, your companions, and gather about you and be a guard for them. After many days you will be visited in the latter years. You will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many peoples on the mountains of Israel which had long been desolated. They were brought out of the nations with an S. They were brought back to Israel, May 14th, 1948. You see, if you read this, it's like as if it already happened. Because in, in God's eyes, in God's mind, it's already a done deal. It's going to happen 100% accuracy. It's going to happen 100%. It's going to happen like as if it already happened. That's how sure it's going to happen and how certain it is. It's going to happen as if it already happened. That's why he's talking, that's why he got the, the Jewish prophet Ezekiel to write this. Because look, what it says. Into the land of those brought back from the sword 
and gathered from many peoples on the mountains of Israel which had long been desolated. They were brought out of the nations with an S, more than one. They were throughout the whole world. And now all of them dwell safely. This is future. Israel is not dwelling safely. They're going to be going to war very soon. This is the future when the Antichrist makes the seven-year peace treaty with the Arabs and with the Jews. But look at this. You will ascend coming like a storm, covering the light like a... No, covering the land like a cloud. Maybe that's talking about planes, eh? Because you didn't know what a plane was back then. And you and all your troops and many peoples with you, thus says the Lord God. But I want to read something. Hold on. To take plunder and to take beauty, to snatch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited. Again, because they were, they, were, they were there before and then they got scattered to the four corners of the earth. And now they're there again. They're again inhabited. And against the people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock, goods who dwell in the midst of the land. See, they have goods. They have all this stuff. If you would have read this in 1930, where the Jews are being terminated, they're being killed by not Adolf Hitler, you would have said, this is crazy. And what is this? Where it says in uh, Zechariah, in that day, Jerusalem shall be a burdensome stone for all peoples. All who would have it away with will surely be cut in pieces. Though all nations are gathered against it. I will gather all the nations up to battle against Jerusalem. You would have thought that was impossible. 70 AD came. Titus, the Roman general, destroyed Jerusalem, was burnt down. They took the Jews. They threw them to the four corners of the earth. That was impossible to happen. How is it going to be a burdensome stone? But look at today, ladies and gentlemen. This is God's word, man. This is the word of the living God. This is amazing, ladies and gentlemen. It's just amazing. God is right on. And his word never fails. And his word will be fulfilled exactly as he said it. That's why the rapture of the church is the next event to take place. And when the rapture of the church takes place, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a sudden moment without warnings. Jesus Christ is coming back to this earth to take his children out of this world. It's going to be a sudden moment. It will happen suddenly. And it will happen without warning. Billions and billions and billions and billions of people will suddenly vanish off of the face of the earth. They're going to vanish. They'll be there, the, they'll be there the, first, the first moment. The next moment, they'll be gone. That's how fast it's going to be. They're just going to vanish. At this time, there's going to be worldwide chaos that will engulf the world. Imagine Christian pilots. You name it. At that time in the rapture, there's going to be plane crashes, car crashes. You name it. They're probably going to say aliens came, radiation, or whatever they're going to say. Whatever they're going to say. But remember you heard on this video before it happened. Because it's all in the word of the living God. This is what's going to happen, my friend. Jesus is coming back to take his own people. It's going to happen without warning and suddenly. There's going to be people missing from throughout the whole world. You may, you may wake up one morning and turn on the news and say, you may, they may be saying, breaking news, an urgent message. Billions and billions of people are missing from throughout the whole world. Nobody knows what happened. And we just got more news that we have caught on footage, on surveillance footage. And they show the, they show the person on the, foot, on the surveillance footage just vanish, evaporate before them. We don't know what's going on. We don't know if this is a UFO invasion attacking planet Earth or what. This is going to be chaos. Many people are going to be afraid. Many people are going to commit suicide at this time. People... People are going to go and lose their minds, literally. The hospitals are going to be flooded. It's going to be crazy. All flights will be canceled. All the airports will be shut down at this time. Billions of people are just going to vanish off of the face of the earth. They're going to come up with a story to excuse it away. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's the rapture of the Church of Jesus Christ. All those people that are missing were Christians. That's why I'm making all these videos for people. Because <clears throat> I, I want to tell people the good news about Jesus. He's the Savior. He wants to save you. He's offering you eternal life. He wants to save you. So if you feel God dealing with your heart to get right with Him, may you get right and be saved. Repent of your sin and trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And this is all I wanted to tell you. This book that I'm holding in my hand right here is the only Word of God.
No other book. All the other books are lies. The, word, the Bible is the only inspired word of God. And there's none like it. When it comes to prophecy, not one prophecy has ever failed. This is all I got to say, and God bless you all.